Good day everyone. So our topic for today is all about determining the effects of physical factors to the biotic components in the terrestrial ecosystems. So ayan po yung napunta sa amin na topic and didiscuss po namin ano, one by one yung mga epekto po ng physical factors to that terrestrial ecosystem. So before po tayo mag-proceed sa epekto, let us all know please po muna kung ano yung ecosystem. Ano nga ba ang ecosystem? So an ecosystem po, ito po yung geographic area where plants, animals, and other organisms Organism as well as the weather and landscape ay nag-work together, nag together po to form a bubble life. So, it is a lot, ano, it is a living organism seems to interact among themselves. So, nag-interact po ito to each other para po uh, makabuo po sila ng, uh, ng life. So, ecosystem po contain ng biotic or living parts also the abiotic which is the non-living parts. And then um, the importance of ecosystem po ay nagpo-provide po ito ng habitat to wild plants and animals and it provides and promotes food chains and food webs. Aside from that, it controls essential ecological process and promotes life in the ecosystem. Ano nga ba yung terrestrial ecosystem? Terrestrial ecosystem is a land-based community of organism and the interactions of biotic and abiotic components in a given area. Ayan, yung mga example po na ipapakita, ayan, isa-isa yung po natin ng examples ha, ayan, yung forest, jungle, grass, polar farm, trees, garden, mountains, um, grassland. Ayan po yung binubuo ng terrestrial ecosystem which is nakikita po natin sa pang-araw-araw na buhay natin. So, ano nga ba yung components ng ecosystem? Based po sa uh, pagbibigay natin ng dep definition ka na sa ecosystem, nabanggit na rin po yung biotic and the biotic. So, components of ecosystem has a two main components which are the constant communication with each other. So, ito pong dalawa is nag-communicate po to each other or um, Uh, nagsasagawa po sila ng mga moves together. So, the two main components of an ecosystem is the biotic, which is the living, and the biotic, which is the non-living component. So, the first component of an ecosystem is what we call biotic components. Biotic components can be described as any living component that affects another organism or shapes the ecosystem. This includes the both animals that consumes other organisms within their ecosystem and, of course, the organism that is being consumed. Biotic factors are the living components of an ecosystem and their activities which include plants, animals, as well as fungi and bacteria. So these factors are living things that directly or indirectly affect organism environment, like the organisms, interactions, waste, parasitism, disease, and predation. Biotic factors can be classified based on the energy requirement source. So each biotic factors needs a proper amount of energy and nutrition to function. So to further discuss the types of factors, let's hear from Camille Morco. The types of biotic factors are the producers, consumers, and the composers. First, the producers are the foundation of an ecosystem. Every other organism depends on producers directly or indirectly for survival. Producers make up the bottom of the food chain. They use abiotic factors like sunlight, water, and soil to create their own food by photosynthesis. After creating simple sugars through this process, Uh, plants often find themselves eaten by another designation of biotic factors, consumers, particularly omnivores and herbivores. Next po is consumers. Consumers has three types po. First is herbivores. Uh, herbivores the organisms which consume or eat only plants as their source of food. Their bodies absorb the nutrients in the plants and transform the stored sugar into energy they can use and store themselves. Next po is carnivore. Carnivores. The word carnivore is derived from Latin and literally means meat, meat eater. The organisms which eat other animals or meat only eat primary consumers and metabolize the pro protein in their meat into energy. Next po is omnivores. In Latin, omnivore means to eat everything. The organisms which eat both plant food as well as meat of animals. Next naman po is the decomposers. The decomposers such as scavengers, fungi, and bacteria receive energy and nutrients from dead producers and consumers. They break down the dead organisms into their most basic chemical components. Many of these components, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, are vital to plant life and healthy plant growth. So next, yung abiotic components of ecosystem is additionally lang po sa report namin. So para po ma-expand yung kaalaman natin about sa biotic and abiotic. 
Some factors affect the ability of organism to survive, reduce health determining types and number of organisms able to exist in environment. Limit, lim, limiting factors disease growth. So abiotic components, air, soil, water, light, minerals, and temperature. Then, abiotic components are physical and or the chemical factors that act on living organisms at any part of their life. These are also called as a ecological factor. When we say ecologic factors, po, uh, these are variables in the environment that impact our organisms and contribute to their characteristic mode of behavior. The physical and chemical factors are characteristic of the environment light, air, soil, and nutrients each from form of abiotic components of an ecosystem. So here for the abiotic components, the living factors that living things need to survive. Example po, soil, sunlight, water, air, temperature, and last is if on energetic nutrients. Yun, so sinasabi nga po na sa isang aquatic ecosystem, ang mga abiotic factors ay mayaaring may kasamang water, sunlight, turbidity, water depth, salinity, available nutrients, and dissolved oxygen. Katulad nito, ang mga abiotic factors daw ay sa terrestrial ecosystem ay nagsasama or include soil. And the soil types are the temperature, rain, altitude, wind, sunlight, and so on. Sinasabi rin na ang mga ekosistem ay may isang komplikadong hanay ng mga pakikipag-ugnayan na nangyayari sa pagitan ng mga biotic at abiotic na bahag. And also, the component of an ecosystem are linked to each other through the energy flows and nutrient cycles. And kahit na ang mga ekosistem ay walang malinaw na mga hangganan, ang mga ugnayan doon na yun ay nakaka-apekto kahit na ang isang factor ay nagbago or na-remove. So to summarize po the difference between the biotic components and abiotic components, the word bio in biotic components po comes from the Greek word which means life. Therefore, it literally refers to the living organisms. The biotic components of ecosystem includes all living organisms found in an ecosystem. Those are producers, macro consumer or also known as animals, and the micro consumer or the decomposer. So when we say producers, it is any kind of green plant that makes their own food by the help of sunlight. And producers use as energy to make sugar, also called glucose, to make such wood, leaves, and roots. And next is the macro consumer, or also called pago pagotropes, because they directly in ingest other animals or plants. And last is the micro consumers. Micro consumers convert organic waste from the environment into usable substance by the process of decomposition. It is the process by which micro consumer can convert dead and decaying matter into organic matter of the soil. The A in abiotic components means without, and since bio means life, therefore, abiotic components means without life. Abiotic components are non-living organism or the physical and chemical aspects of an ecosystem. The examples are air, water, soil, temperature, and sunlight. So we have climatic, fa climatic factors. Climatic factors include light, temperature, precipitation, atmospheric humidity, and wind. And next is the topographic factors that include altitude, surface slope, and exposure, etc. And last is adaptive factors that include soil and substratum. In detail, the biotic and abiotic components of ecosystem work together and in interact with each other to maintain balance in our environment. So, naging essential components of ecosystem. Producers are the living organisms in the ecosystem that take in energy from sunlight and use it to transform carbon dioxide and oxygen into sugars. A secondary producer is also a consumer because it must eat plants to survive. But since herbivores produce food themselves, they are considered a secondary producer. Transformers are the living components of the ecosystem and they are fungi and bacteria. However, carbon dioxide is a residue in an ecosystem, so the correct option is carbon dioxide. Terrestrial ecosystems are the major ecosystem encompassing all land-based life. Human population is mainly depending upon the conditions of terrestrial climate and resources. The man's impact of this ecosystem will affect the parameter of these units. It is very essential to maintain the terrestrial ecosystem for, for all our, of our sustainability. So, let's move on. Um, let's talk about um, effects of biotic factors on vegetation. First of all, ano po ba yung vegetation? Yung vegetation po, ito po yung is defined as a growing plants or particular plant species in a region or community. Ito po sa biotic factors, may tinatawag tayong uh, biotic effects that um, any activities of a living organism po affects another organisms in its ecosystems, which is pakasok dito yung 
um, yung sinabi po kanina ni Morgo na producers, consumers, predators, and as well as the decomposers. Uh, this includes po both animals that consume other organisms within their ecosystems, the organism that is being consumed. Periodic factors could be defined as the influence upon the environment of organisms owing to the presence and activities of other organisms as distinct physical, biotic, environment, environment. So, ano nga ba yung epekto ng biotic factors on vegetation? The plants live together in a commu community can influence one another. Gaya nang nakalagay dito, yung mga microorganisms tulad ng bacteria, algae, fungi, at viruses can affect the life of plants. Microorganisms have a range of direct effects on plants through manipulation of hormones and protection against pathogens. Any activity of the living organisms which may cause marked effects upon vegetation in any way is referred to as biotic effect. The biotic effect may be both direct and indirect. Beside this, the decomposition of dead parts of plant bodies causes significant addition of organic compounds and humus soil. Yung animals na malapit sa mga halaman ay nakaka din sa buhay ng halaman, aming paraan. Kami din mga animals ang gumagamit ng mga halaman para gawin itong pagkain at tirahan. Bukod sa mga animals, yung tao ay pinakamabuluhan para sa pagbabago ng halaman. Again, biotic factor is any living component that affects another organism. To elaborate more po, um, these are the biofactors po that affects on vegetation. Unang-una po dito is yung human effects on vegetation. So alam naman natin, kapag human activities, they uh, destroy the land or vegetation structure. Because of uh, destroying po, nawawalan po ng, ano, ng um, support, yung per nutrient, yung pag-grow ng plants kasi wala nang kakayahang mag-grow yung plants because they have, they, they less the nutrients. Tapos po, um, kapag na na-elevate na yung mismo yung land, nawawala na po yung mga roots or yung seeds na na nandun or na nag-exist. Then, effects of animals grazing on vegetation, yan po yung cycles. Yung example po niyan is yung grazing and browsing. Um, that affect the vegetation structure, which creates po habitat for grassland species. This practice has po result in homogeneous um, rangeland, which may contribute to the biodiversity loss in grassland ecosystems. Dahil nga po sa patuloy po na um, yung mga animals, eh, patuloy po na po sa pagkain sa mga, sa mga weeds or sa mga grass, uh, meron po silang um, um, ability na ma-remove yung mismong yung root system ng isang plants which, is, uh, which means po na hindi na kayang um, hindi na kaya tumubo ulit. Yan, interaction among plants growing in a community. Dito po masasabi natin na nakakaroon po ng um, survival of competitions. Um, that's because po, species po with identical niches also have identical needs, which means they would compete for precise, um, precisely the same resources that shows which one can reproduce the best. Yan, letter D naman, interaction between plants and soil microorganisms. Dito po makikita natin kung paano po na uh, kinakain ng mga soil microorganism yung mismong plants, which also affect the root system pati na yung structure ng, ano, ng plants. So, ayan po. So, ano nga po ba ang mga katulong para magprotektahan ang ating terrestrial ecosystem? So, as for the marine environment po, mahalaga po yung ginagampan ng pressure sa terrestrial environment to operating on global scale include po yung anthropogenic climate change. Example po, yung atmospheric warming and changes to water regimes. While well, sa local pressures include po yung introduction of alien species and impact from human activities. In protect our terrestrial ecosystem, dito po include yung pressures and most ecosystems in the region are highly fragmented from historical tree and clearing land development. Tree clearing continues to occur although at a much lower rate than previously. Pressures are the direct environmental effects of drivers such as climate change, urban development, and agricultures. Yung pressure po, pwede po siya mangyari anytime na pwede po maka sa quality, sa dami, at sa daloy ng tubig natin, which is yung, which is nagre-reduce po siya sa ecosystem health and service provision. So, yung pressure daw po is parang pulso, minsan malakas, at tuloy-tuloy, minsan kalma o sakto lang ang beat. In general po, the health of terrestrial ecosystem is in decline. This is shown in the many species now occurring over smaller ranges, the decline and loss of some species, land ecosystem, and loss of ecosystem function. Co complex, complex ecosystems are typically being replaced by simpler ecosystems. So next po is trends. Land clearing remains the greatest threat to biodiversity as well as being a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, land degradation, dry land salinity, and reduced water quality. 
So yung land clearing points sa process of removing trees, stumps, brush, stones, and other obstacles from an area is required to increase the size of crop producing land base of an existing farm. And yung land clearing po, naglilid siya sa habitat loss and habitat also leads to excess runoff which has serious negative impact for the Great Barrier Reef, machine ecosystems, and marine industries such as fisheries and tourism. Biodiversity values are expected to continue to decline in response to current and historical clearing and fragmentation. Yung biodiversity naman po, we all know naman na it refers to all the variety of life that can be found on earth like plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms, as well as to the communities that they form and the habitats in which they live. And yung biodiversity, importante siya in terms of economic because it provides human with raw material for consumption and production. Importante din po siya sa ecological life support because biodiversity provides functioning ecosystems that supply oxygen, clean air and water, pollination of plants, and pest control. So all in all, our topic is about terrestrial ecosystems and it includes all the diverse flora and fauna that inhabit our landscape. Yung flora po is about plant life and yung fauna naman po, it refers to animals. And lastly, yung terrestrial ecosystems na po provide siya ng many services that provides food, fiber, fuel, shelter resources, storing, transforming, and releasing carbon, water, and other nutrients. In addition po, because of terrestrial ecosystems, nare-reduce po yung impact ng floods, cyclones, and droughts na po. At napoprotektahan din ito yung iba't ibang soil resources, resources from salinity and erosion. And ang terrestrial ecosystem, nakakaproduce siya ng atmospheric, which, atmospheric oxygen, which is napakalaga sa mga living organism. And terrestrial ecosystem regu regulates climate. That's all po. Thank you.